Hello, I played adventure Forgotten Relics, which is the adventure that came with the book Everon Racing from the Last War. I did play it solo with my character Cobaltus, the same character I used in my previous summary from the other adventure, also set in Eberon, Last Court and Call. But I did die in the first encounter, so I decided to start again, but this time with a whole party. So I play it with Cobaltus, the Warforce Wizard, Drista, the Halfling Rogue, Dorber Duncan, the Dwarven Cleric, and Zarina, the Human Fighter. The adventure begins in the Upper Central Plateau, where the characters meet Sergeant Germain Vilroy. Cobaltus, who has contact within the authorities, introduces the group to her. The sergeant is gruff and straightforward hiring the party to meet with a warforce named Cole in the Gog Carnival, a warforce bar in the High Walls district of Lower Tavik's Landing. She offers them 25 gold pieces each up front, and an additional 50 gold pieces each if they bring Cole back safely. Gilroy emphasizes the importance of discretion, worried that her presence may attract unwanted attention and endanger Cole. Meeting Cole at the Cog Carnival. The party finds Cole, a black one armed warforce, at the Cog Carnival. The bar is filled with warforce, many of whom are missing digits or limbs, and the air is thick with the smell of tobacco and the sound of raucous games. After a brief conversation, they learn about the kidnapping of Kadin Diorian, the murder of Fraser, and dusk hunt for artifacts in Old Charn. Cole, visibly shaken, recounting how her friend Razor was executed as an example. Just as Cole finished her story, a bolt of fire narrowly misses her, causing chaos in the bar. The Dusk Hit Squad, consisting of a female shifter named Hound and several kobolds, ambushes the party. The party fights back, with Trista using her agility to flank the attackers, Zarina tanking the hits, Dorbo healing the wounded, and Cobalto supporting with spells and his light crossbow. Armand, Cobalto's pet armadillo, targets the weakest enemies. The party manages to defeat the hit squad, capturing one kobold for interrogation. Under Dorbo's stern questioning, the captured Dask member reveals that Gara, a half-ogre, ordered them to kill Cole to silence her. Rescuing Kid in Dorian, the party brings Cole to Sergeant Vilroy for protection and head to the Unicorn State in the Mithril Tower District to meet Aldin Dorian. The gates of Unicorn State are open, allowing the party to walk onto the property after presenting themselves to the guards. The state is grand, with unicorn statues and topiaries, and the house is clearly owned by one of the city's wealthiest dragon-marked families. Aldin is a haggard man in his late thirties, deeply worried about his son. He recounts how Katin was abducted almost a month ago, and how he was forced to cooperate with Gara, who demanded workforce laborers to dig for something in Old Sharn. Ishtai, Aldin's Kalashtar bodyguard, telepathically gives the party directions to the ruins of Old Sharn, where Kaidin is imprisoned. Aldin breaks down, sobbing as the party leaves to rescue his son. Exploring Old Sharn. Following Ishtai's direction, the party finds the lift and descends into the Dusk excavation site in the ruins of Old Sharn. The lift ride is long and unsettling, shaking and rattling as it descends into the depths of the city. When the doors open, the party find themselves in a vast, unlit cavern filled with broken stonework from ancient buildings. The air is slate, filled with dust and the scent of decay. Ahead of them, a 50-foot diameter pit has been intentionally dug, and the soft sobs of a young child can be heard from a wooden shed on the first side of the pit. Or Dusk, the goblins, guard the area, hiding in the pit. The party notices them in time to avoid a surprise attack and engages in combat. They manage to defeat the goblins, with one fleeing into the ruins. The party descends into the excavation pit and finds eleven warforged in various states of disrepair, chained together on the pit floor. Among them is the corpse of a warforged with his head struck from its shoulders. The party frees the warforged, who scatter into the cogs, grateful for the rescue. They then approach the shed and find Kate and Dorian 
a small child covered in dust and wearing the ruined livery of House Orion. Caden is nearly catatonic, but after some comforting and healing magic from Dorbo, he begins to open up about his ordeal. He tells the party that a big mean lady named Gara and her goblin friends imprisoned him here. While exploring further, the party encounters the ghost of Fingston Nisilish, a gnome inquisitive who died when the old city collapsed during the War of the Mask. The ghost is cursed to investigate a long unsolved jewel haste. The party helps Fingston find his remains, gaining valuable historical insights about Charn. Grateful, Fingston fades away, granting the party advantage of wisdom, perception, or intelligence investigation checks for the next 24 hours. Sky Coach Ride As the party leaves Mithril Tower with Caden, a Sky Coach piloted by a disguised changeling named Jazz, voicing a Sergeant Vilroy, approaches them. Jazz tries to convince the party to ward, but Tristan notices slight differences in the Sergeant's demeanor. When confronted, Jazz leaps out of the Sky Coach, using a feather token to land safely. The party quickly stabilizes the Sky Coach and pursues Jazz through the crowded streets of Charn. After a short chase, they capture Jazz, who reveals that Gara is leaving Charn on a lane rail bound for a road, and that the changeling role was to deliver them into a trap at Gara's safe house. Terminus and Gara's apartment. The party heads to Terminus in Lower Tavik's Landing. They navigate the busy streets filled with travelers, pickpockets, and con artists, and make their way to Gara's apartment in a tenement tower. They speak with Marticia Calandra, an elderly mage Wright, who informs them about Gara's comings and goings. Marticia saw Gara leave the apartment minutes before the party arrived. Inside Gara's apartment, the party encounters four Kenku cut purses hiding behind the furniture. A battle ensues, and the party defeats the Kenku. In the bedroom, they find an old named Nar frantically burning documents. The party defeats Nar and rescues certain Vilroy, who is bound and unconscious on a mattress. They recover two important documents, a receipt from a lightning rail ticket to road and a list of Warforged addresses. Catching the lightning rail The party rushes to Terminus Station just as a lightning rail train is about to depart. They fight through a group of Dask bandits who attempt to stop them and manage to board the train. The train has ten cars, including a first-class car where Gara is hiding. The party searches the train and finds Gara longing in a luxury passenger car with a battle axe within reach and a wooden chest by her feet. A chaotic evil sprite named Rot, who is invisible, serves Gara. The party confronts Gara, who initially tries to bribe them with 100 gold pieces to let her go. When the party refuses, a battle breaks out. Gara, seeing herself outnumbered, tries to escape by climbing onto the roof of the train, where she can shove enemies off. The party follows onto the roof, successfully maintaining their balance. After a first fight, they manage to subdue Gara without killing her. The party secures Gara with rope and makes their way back inside the train car. They present the writ to the conductor, who halted the train at the next station. Sharon watch guards arrive to take Gara into custody, verifying the party claims and thanking them for their service. Sergeant Vilroy congratulates the party for their work. And that was my summary of Forgotten Relics. Thank you very much for watching and hearing. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.